So we've dealt with solving equations or trig equations without a calculator, and we, we noted that we'd have to use our knowledge of trigonometry to get those answers. Here we're going to talk about solving trig equations with calculators. Now one of the very common things to do when you solve an equation with a calculator is to to treat them to treat the equations as though they're two functions that we're setting equal to each other. So what I mean by that is we've saw we've done this problem here. We did it in the last video, but we used algebra to solve it. Let's see if we get the same answers uh, solving it graphically, which we should. And let's also just see what that process looks like. So I want to view this left hand side as like my first function. So I'm going to put that into y1 in my calculator. And I'm going to view the 6 as my second function. That's my y2. And what I want to see is where do these two functions intersect? Because where they intersect is going to tell me the solutions. So let's go to our calculators. And in y1, I'm going to put x squared minus 3. And in y2, I'm going to put 6. And now I'm going to graph. And so here is x squared minus 3. And here is 6. This is y equals x squared minus 3, and this is y equals 6. So what I want to find is where they intersect. And that is going to give me the solution to the equation. So they intersect at negative 3, x equals negative 3, which is what we got, one of the answers we got when we did it algebraically. And hopefully then the next answer we produce is 3, and it is. So my answers are 3 and negative 3. So again, I'm not saying you would necessarily do it like that. You wouldn't necessarily do that problem like that, but it is a completely legitimate way to do the problem if you have a calculator with you. And it's very useful to do when you have no other alternative but to use graphs to get the answers. So that brings us to this equation here. Okay, we can't use a uh, We can't do this without a calculator because we're not given a ratio that's a nice ratio or a familiar ratio like one half, two, one over root three. Those are all sort of the combinations of ratios you can get using the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90 triangles. But this is just some decimal. So we're going to use the calculator to get this, to get our answers. So I'm going to view this as a function. I'm going to view this as y1 is equal to secant of x. I'm going to view this as y2 is equal to 2.7. And we are going to find where the graphs intersect. So let's go to our calculator. And now there's no secant button, but we do know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So to input secant, we're going to do 1 divided by cosine. And that is going to give us the secant graph. And in y2, we're going to put uh, 2.7. Yep, 2.7. Okay, now another little subtlety that's important is that we want our answers to be in between 0 and 2 pi. So that informs me on what I want to make my my x min and my x max for my window because why why make the my, why make the window go f beyond the range of answers that we want so let's make our window go from negative uh, I'll go from zero x equals zero to two pi and we may have to play around with our y values but you know leave it in the standard view if you'd like for now. Okay, so the secant graph should look familiar to you. And here is this horizontal line is 2.7. So we need to find the intersections. Now just be aware, these lines here are represented, are, they, are supposed to be the asymptotes, but the calculator is a calculator and it can't really, doesn't understand what an asymptote is, so it just kind of computes it. Um, it. It puts it in even though it really shouldn't be there. So our, the, the two intersection points look like they're right here and right there. So let's find them. So we go by the intersection point, hit enter a few times, and what happened there? 
not sure. Let's try again. 1.19. So I'm going to just record that. And Five point zero nine, and those are our answers. Now, one thing you should notice that there's the, the tricky thing about this is that in terms of grading a problem like this, it's it's very difficult for me to see where your work was because it was all done in the calculator. Okay, so you need to be very careful and thoughtful about how you do these answers. Make sure your uh, calculator is in radian mode because if it's not, you're not going to get the appropriate pictures. Uh, let's take a look at this last one. 3 cosecant of x minus 5 is equal to 7. And again, we're solving for x. So I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to put that in parentheses just not to confuse you or distinguish it from another problem. That's the cosecant of x. So we have a couple options here. One is to simply put the left-hand side as y1 and the right-hand side as y2. We can do that and find where they intersect. But we could also kind of maybe make our lives a little easier by doing a little algebra first. So sometimes you combine the two methods to get an answer. And so what I mean by that is like, let's pretend that cosecant of x, we kind of want that to be by itself on one side of the equation, just like secant of x was by itself over here. So let's like pretend for the moment that the secant of x is just like the letter a. It's a variable for the moment. So then this equation is really, we can rewrite it as three times a minus five is equal to seven. The reason this is useful is because now we're just going to solve for a, and it's going to make the equation just a little bit more manageable, or a little less crazy to put into the calculator. Divide by 3, I get a is equal to 4. But of course, a is what I called cosecant of x, so this means really that cosecant of x. is equal to 4. So all the answers to this equation are going to be the same as the answers to this one. And we've got our interval here too, so we know what our x min and x max should be. So let's go look at what this would be. I'm going to put in cosecant of x is equal to 4. So again, there's no cosecant button, but we know it's the reciprocal of sine. So we can use that. And then I'm going to go to my window, and my x min is 0, but my x max is not going to be pi. And there it is. We got two answers, it looks like, here and here. So we find them. Point two five. Point two five. And two point eight nine. And there are our two answers. Okay, so graphing is a legitimate technique, and if you have a calculator, it's also it's a, it's a great way to check answers as well. I'm going to leave you with a few problems that you can just practice on your own. So I'm just going to leave you with a few problems to practice on your own. How about um, sine of x is equal to sine of x is equal to um, 0.8 and let's solve that for 
0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to pi over 2. And I'd like you to try cosine of x is equal to 1.3. Find all solutions. And then I'd like you to try tangent of x is equal to 4.6. And let's find this on this interval. So go ahead and try these on your own if you'd like. And um, you can ask me about the, the solutions in class.